I just wanted to shoot a quick video that we could uh, do during the break time. This is a code book set of suggestions that will hopefully, hopefully help you adjust your own code book. So if you'll start with opening your 2014 edition code book to page 67, and this is going to be for residential services. Um, with some notes to commercials. So on page 67 of your 2014 code book, give you a second to uh, turn to that page. All right, to start, there's a couple of things you need to know about services. First of all, they're, they're basically in one of two types. They're either residential or they're not. The not stuff can be, of course, commercial uh, services. They can also be individual uh, non-residential uh, you know, uh, service calculations. However, the bulk majority of the stuff on your test and in the service world or the world that we you know, actually do are mainly residential services and commercial services. Residential services fall under basically one of two categories. They fall under what we call the standard method of calculation which you'll notice on page 67 under 220.12, lighting loads for spe uh, specified occupancies. The last part down here, the second sentence, starts with the floor area for each floor should be calculated from the outside dimensions of the building, dwelling unit, or other area involved. All right, so this, this applies to both commercial and residential. However, the next sentence is residential only. For dwelling units, the calculated floor area, continuing on to page 68 at the top, shall not include open porches, garages, or unused or unfinished spaces not adaptable for future use. So we're talking about basically excluding a garage area, and it's been a while since I've seen that on a test anyway, so effectively that's not the, uh, the biggest part to, to worry about. However, let's take your highlighter, and let me find an actual yellow highlighter. We're gonna highlight that last sentence there just to keep it in mind. Now remember, earlier on the page before, it told us that we would calculate it based on the outside dimensions of the property. Again, that's just a small note, but that means that if you're looking at a, a set of prints, the wall spaces would also be included in this calculated uh, square feet. So highlight just the uh, not including open porches, unused or unfinished spaces that are not adaptable for future use. Now, in other words, the opposite of that is actually what we, we follow. In other words, if it is considered to be future adaptable space, in other words, if it's a an area that we decide or have determined that eventually someone is going to uh, change that to a, a bonus room or an area that might be a playroom or a game room or who, who knows what the area might be, that would also have to be included, but unfortunately, or fortunately for most of us, we don't run across that either on the test or, or even in the world for that matter. Okay, so that, that's basically the, the beginning of it. Everything that I'm going to cover here in the next few minutes is all going to be considered the standard method of calculation. Parts two here, which is considered to be the branch circuit uh, load calculations, and parts three, which starts on page 69, where it says feeder and service load calculations, both of these parts are considered to be the standard method of calculation. Okay, now step one, when we're doing service calculations, the first thing we need is we need to calculate the lights. And so if you look on page 68, under 220.12, you'll see a small table here on the right-hand column at the top of the page. And you'll notice I've got a few notes written in here, and let's go through these notes real quickly. First and foremost, you'll notice that dwelling units is listed about six or seven down right there under dwelling units. got the little tiny letter A next to it, and it says over here in this last column, number three. So this wor works out to be three volt amps per square foot for a dwelling unit. Now that little letter A down here, right next to the end of the uh, uh, par uh, uh, the uh, label, corresponds with a note down at the bottom of the table that just says C220.14J. Well, 220.14J on the next page over here just simply says that this number here, which is the three volt amps, actually already includes all of the 15 amp what we call general purpose. In other words, they're not specific um, circuits that are calculated for items such as your kitchen or the laundry room. But these are just, a, you know, the plugs in the bedroom, the living room, the hallway, stuff like that. All of those are already included in this number right here. And in fact, 
per code, there's not really any way to, to separate those. So they're telling us that we've already lumped really both our, our initial steps together when it comes to dwelling units because we include all of the general use receptacles in that same step. Um, 20 amps rating or less is what it says. However, basically we differentiate that in the, uh, the exam world as these are basically the 15 amp plugs. And you don't have to write this part down. This is just kind of some clarification, you know, for uh, differentiating between these and the required circuits, which are the 20 amp required circuits, but we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so I'm just going to put next to J, Resi Receptacles. That way I know that that is the section that calculates receptacles for residential dwellings. I'm not going to really do anything with this. It's just basically a, a section that tells me that this number here for dwelling units is different then, for example, this number here, the three and a half, for banks and uh, for banks, banks, this three and a half, as well as everything else on this table except for this dwelling units, and the only other one that, that corresponds with it is also this hotels with permanent provisions for uh, cooking by tenants. But this is different than these because these are just lights. These are lights and 15 amp receptacles. Okay, enough of that. All right, so step one is I'm going to take this square feet. This is to me in the test question. I'm going to multiply it times three according to this table. All right. <clears throat> now, you and I both know that in this world, we seldom get what we want, all the time at least. And so this number represents a dream world for all of us. That This would be, for example, you know, you've been sitting there in that chair for, you know, a day or so, and you've got another day left to, to listen to that bald guy keep talking, and it's boring. I get that. But just think about when you get home, your wife's going to have everything laid out for you. She's going to have supper made. She's going to be cooking you some kind of a cake or dessert for... For just because she loves you, she's gonna have the uh, you know your your beer cooler trekked out and set up next to you in the living room. She's gonna have your TV favorite TV program already ready to go. She's probably probably washing your clothes in the in the washing machine, fixing to iron your your favorite shirt for work tomorrow, and then you wake up. <laughs> I mean, the reality of it is, this number right here ain't never gonna happen. We've got to figure out how to get this number though from a code calculation called a connected load and that's what this is this is a connected load meaning that if everything on that or everything possibly that could be on is on that number would be what we're talking about we get to the reality of it by the next page over with the table that's at the top left hand side of page 70. this table 220.42 is the reality sinking in and this is going to give us a, a D-rated calculation that's a little bit closer to what we actually expect might occur in the real world, and that is the first 3,000 volt amps of our calculated value that we just got through with will be kept at 100% of that number. In other words, I'm going to keep 3,000 volt amps right off the bat. I'm not going to derate that at all. I'm going to highlight that just so I don't lose it. And this is, you know, the lighting loads. This is basically step two if you if you like step one being the three volt amps per square foot step two being the derating for the lighting and in the case of dwelling units receptacles as well right now before i do this this number here back on 220.12 and this little note down here with j being included j tells me that i'm allowed to include any other required receptacles in my calculated value before I take my D rate from this table right here. So we've got one more little section we've got to go to real quick, and that is on the same page as you're at with the D rating table. This is the 20 amp requirements that are in addition to the three volt amps per square foot. And this is special again to just the receptacles in residential dwellings. So what I'm looking at is 220.52, lighting loads and laundry loads in a dwelling unit. I'm sorry about the uh, the back and forth on the camera here. I'm trying to to uh, highlight talk and, and stabilize the book all at the same time. But basically we've got two different circuit types that we're going to have to add to this number that we've got before we take this derating step up here. So the 3 volt amps per square foot for the lights plus 1500 volt amps requirement here for each of the required kitchen appliances. So, N210.11C, 
we were required to have at least two small circuit uh, uh, circuits required per residential dwelling that are 20 amp circuits. So basically we'd have to have this number here times two, and I've got a note down here that two are required, so I've got basically a, a, a reminder to myself that I have to have at least two of these right here. And those two have a combined value of 3,000 volt amps according to this article. That's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. There's not anything real uh, complicated about that. And then the laundry circuit, small appliance load, circuit load is the first of the, the two. The second type of circuit, which is the third required physical circuit, is a laundry circuit. And again, I have to have one at least minimum for that. And it will add its own 1,500 volt amps to the 3,000 above that. So combined total between these two uh, requirements, I have to have a, a 4,500 volt amps added in. All right, so what we're doing here is we're basically taking this 4,500 volt amps and we're gonna add that to the table value that we calculated for the lights and the 15 amp plugs from this table. Let me get a piece of paper out and I'll work the example real quick. If I've got a 3,000 square foot dwelling, let's just say to make it easy. All right, I'm gonna use an example here of a residential dwelling that has a 3,200 square foot footprint and that means that we calculated this square footage square footage based on the outside dimensions of the, of the dwelling my first step step one is going to be to take this 3200 square feet and multiply it times the table value for the lighting on that table 220.12 on page 68 so that three volt amps per square foot on this uh, step one is going to be to take that 3200 multiply it times three all right, that takes care of the lights. And again, like I said, the three volt amps in the case of dwelling units also includes the plugs that are the 15 amp variety, non you know specific required circuits there. All right, so 3,200 times three gives me 9,600 volt amps. Then I have to go back and add the 1,500 volt amps for each of the required kitchen appliance circuits that I have to have. And that's two of the 20 amp circuits required under 210.11c. And that means I'm going to have 1,500 volt amps for kitchen appliance one, kitchen appliance two, that's small appliance one and small appliance two. And then I also have to have 1,500 volt amps for the laundry circuit. Now, to make that short, it's probably easier for you to just simply remember that that block here of 4,500 VA has to go in every single time. And the way I, I always like to say it in class is if it's got a pot, a cot, and a hot. In other words, if somebody can sleep there, you know, uh, shower there to, to be nice and, and, and keep it clean and also cook there this amount of, of, of volt amps will be added every single time the only exception to that would be multifamily dwellings where you've got common accessible to all occupants uh, laundry facilities for people to do their laundry there other than that you're gonna have this 40 even if they swear on the stack of Bibles that they're not gonna have a laundry uh, you know a washer and dryer in the house this step is still added as well as these two. And again, keep in mind, these are minimums. So you may run across questions where, or, or instances where you may have more than just two circuits for the kitchen. In fact, that happens probably more often than not. But as a minimum requirement, this is what we have to add right here. 4,500 volt amps added to the 9,600 for the lights. In this case, that gives us a total of, let's see here, be 11, I uh, carry one, nine, 10, 11, 14,100 VA. Again, this is my fantasy land. This is, you know, assuming that everything was on the house that they could possibly be on, and I know, and you know, that's not going to happen. So to get this down to something more reasonable, I'm going to take 3,000 of this number at 100%. Now, keep in mind, I'm not subtracting this 3,000 to get rid of it. I'm taking this 3,000, and I'm just putting it up here just to the side so I, I can remember later on I've got to come back and get this added back in, but that 3,000 is 100% of that number. You can't touch that block. It's non-deratable. But the balance down here of what's left over, this 11,100, this is the amount that's deratable according to the table on 220.42. So I'm going to take a derating of 35%. I'm going to keep 35% of this number. So I'm really, what I'm doing is I'm discounting it by 65%, really. And so the number, the math here is just on your calculator, 11,100 times 0.35, and you should get a value that's 3,885, if I'm not mistaken. 
Let me do that real quick on the calculator just to make sure. So we've got 3,200. Be nice if my... Okay, I had to switch my calculator <coughs> to my uh, on-screen calculator. All right, so we have 3,200 square feet. We multiplied that times 3 for the volt amps per square foot. That gives 9,600. Plus to that number, we had to add 1,500 three times, effectively adding... Oops, excuse me. Uh, that's not uh, what I wanted to do. Let me go back here. It's uh, 4,500 times. No, well, here, let me, I'm going to have to delete it. So we have uh, 9,600 plus we have 4,500. Well, let's <laughs> clear the whole thing. All right, so 9,600 plus the 4,500, which is the three 1,500 volt amps per required circuit required. They give us 14,100. We had to subtract 3,000 from that because we can't touch the first 3,000 of that number, giving you 11,100 left over. That's the amount that we can take this derating of 35% against. So we take the 11,100, multiply that times 0.35. That gives us 3,888.5. So this number here, 3885, that's the balance that we take, that's in volt amps, of course, and process that and bring it up here and include it here with this number that was up here already saved at 100% of the first 3,000, so plus 3885 VA, and that gives us a total then of 7,885 volt amps, and that, gentlemen, is the minimum required demand load for a single family residential dwelling in the 2014 code book. That's the minimum amount we have to have. Now, what do I do with this number? Well, all of these numbers first and foremost are service calculations. The, or, excuse me, service values that are meant to be used to size the feeder on the outside of the building. So the 7885 is not a branch circuit calculation. It's not something that I expect to divide by 120 volts and figure out how many circuits I need for whatever. This is just the amount that goes along with the range calculated value in demand load, the, the uh, dryer values in demand loads, minimum of 5,000 uh, watts or nameplate, whichever is larger in the case of dryers. For the first one through four, there's no D rate, so it'd be 100% of usually of, of the dryer, usually at minimum of 5,000 VA. All of those items are similar to this number right here, and we're going to add them all together to tally them up to calculate the service requirements for the feeders on the outside of the building. So when we're talking about the grand scheme of things, that main service panel that we've got outside and that feeder coming down, you know, of course, into our, our meter, this, this wire, these conductors that are feeding this uh, uh, panel here, that's the, what we're calculating is that, that feeder demand load. All right. Hope that helped. I'll go back in uh, class and we'll go through that here in, in a bit. Uh, just in case I forget to tell you in class, I've got a lot of these videos already posted on YouTube that are free of charge. They're great uh, uh, tools to use to kind of reflect over some of the things we cover in class. They're also good, you know, refresher material. Some of them are, you know, day-long classes and things that, uh, you know, might take a little bit of your time to kind of go through all of them. But uh, it's the, the place that I put most of the newer stuff on there. If you don't mind, guys, YouTube, Mitchell Talbert, or Electrician Testing, that's the uh, name to search us for. Uh, search me under, so YouTube. I have a channel there. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, but if you will actually subscribe to my channel, I, I, once I get a 1,000 subscribers, I can then post private videos that I can give you guys uh, links to. And you can then, of course, see videos that I, I don't have posted yet because they're, they're too sensitive to, to allow to be viewed by the public. All right. At any rate, hope this helped, and we'll see you again after the break. Thank you.